Hey, what's going on? Jerry Viking Performance here, again with Jordan, one of our coaches. And in our series of helping you coach the big three lifts, this is our bench video. Uh, call again, we're using more of like a college scale. Bench 101, bench 491, and even maybe a little bit more advanced bench from there. 691 or 601, I don't remember the numbers, doesn't matter. But the idea here is again, we're not really focusing necessarily on the bench being done itself, but more on the ability of like helping coaches and trainers learn how to coach others without overwhelming them. Like I mentioned in the squat video, it's very common as a coach or a trainer to want to overcorrect or overteach trainees. We want to tell them everything about how to do a lift better. And as a result, they get so much information, they just can't apply it and there's no way they remember it and turn into habits. So what we're actually looking at is what are the most important things to teach first, only focusing on those early on, just changing one or two things at a time, making sure they have that down and get that habit. And then from there, once they've actually kind of mastered that initial set and their lift itself is progressing, then we look at more advanced coaching techniques we, we can add in and share some of that greater knowledge to increase their performance. So basic bench, bench 101, would be similar to the squat. Make sure that when you're on the bench, laying flat, the bar is at a height that the lifter will be able to pick up without having to like really reach up. So there should still be you know like plenty of room here for her to lift up. I'll just let Jordan pick it up, put it down real quick, just so we can see that. Again, simple, simple concept. Be be surprised how many lifters will skip that, especially if they're lifting in a group. So we always want to make sure that it's set up so that the lifter has to pick it up a little bit, even in a group. Set it up to the person who might who like with maybe the shortest arms. So make sure that we have, like that is flat on the bench. We want to get the eyes set up directly underneath the bar. And when I say directly, I mean that as basic as possible. A lot of lifters will think, oh, my head's under the bar, but they're too far back, maybe they're too far forward. All that does is the eyes underneath gives you good position to be able to look the bar up, while also making it almost no chance that you'll be able, that you'll hit the, the hooks when you're actually benching. That's the primary reason to make sure that you're there. If you're too far down, you won't be in a position where you can really unwrap the bar. Too far up, then we're at a risk of hitting the hooks. So eyes underneath the bar will help make sure that we're in a good position to pick it up while not hitting that. From there, once that bar is actually picked up, make sure the grip is just even on both sides. Go ahead, Jordan. And from there, with the feet on the floor for a basic bench, have them try to keep those shoulder blades back like she is. So you may or you may not see this natural arch. Again, A-OK -okay on that, what we're looking for is just stability. Um, don't have them overemphasize that. Some people try to stay straight. Do not do that. Allow a natural arch to happen. Keeping the shoulder blades back is gonna be the important part. And then from here, just having them go ahead and lower it to, should be like somewhere in the lower part of the chest. It may even end up more like upper abdomen, depending on how they're, um, just how they're built and their longevity. But from there, getting a solid press back up. Again, just simply telling most athletes to press upwards will be enough. If you really want to get just a little bit more specific, tell them, go ahead and go down again, that it will be straight up and ending more towards their shoulders. So there will be this slight curve back at the very top. Again, uh, that just kind of is intuitive for most, because that's where your arms are when they're straightened out, but to make sure they don't stay down here in this lane the whole time. So really, from the bench 101, those are the key things. The eyes, the back, the feet being on the floor and not doing this whole, I'm gonna lift up and bench with one foot down that a lot of people do if you haven't seen it. And being able to get that solid raise. So another part that, that mentioned, but should, is that bringing it down, there's really no reason to not touch your chest to get all the way. So you should be able to get all the way to your chest, but the muscle still working and being tense and then driving back up. Go ahead. So again, that was bench 101. So I mean, it's relatively simple. Now, if we want to get advanced, the bench might be the most complex of the exercises when we're looking to get a little bit more advanced. So what we'll start with is with both the feet and the shoulders. We're going to, in both cases, try to get more tension because the tighter you are on the bench and the less you can move, then when, when the athlete presses through the bar, they'll be able to transfer more force through the bar itself into that movement. So I'll do the shoulder blades first. So simply, once the athlete has the grip down, I want to really not just simply think of having the shoulder blades back, but of actually like gripping the bench underneath with the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades should roll back and downwards. Get like they're really trying to create the strong arch of the chest pushed upwards. And, and then when 
throughout the entire lift, that position should be sacred. Like the lifter never wants to let up on that shoulder blade. The other part is on the feet. The feet, whereas before we just simply wanted to make sure they're on the floor, now we want to actually get them tight and actually have them wedged. So unless you're talking competitive, exactly how you do this doesn't matter. I usually have athletes just simply think about pulling their feet underneath a little bit, really get it to where it's tight and where like, you know, on their toes, that's tight and they can't really move all while keeping the butt still on the bench. So with the shoulders tight and the feet tight, everything is there and now all the force is able to either drive through the bench, which won't move, the floor, which won't move, or the bar, which will move. So once I have these set up here, I want to make sure that actually with the uh, lift off itself. So instead of simply telling the lift off, like I mentioned keeping this position sacred, I prefer to have my athletes once they become good at this, thinking about pulling the bar off of the rack rather than lifting upwards. So you're just simply coming straight down off of it so they can keep that, that, that the shoulder blades tight, where when they lift upwards, the shoulder blades will probably have to come up to some degree. That's another thing you want to watch out if, uh, if you're involving liftoffs, is that whoever's doing the lift off isn't picking the bar upwards and pulling the shoulders out. Make sure the shoulders can stay pinned and it's pulling straight out. From here, the shoulders are tight, the feet are tight, the athlete goes ahead and lowers it. Also, encourage them to feel like tension building in the muscles as they're lowering it, whether they're going down slowly or not. And at the bottom, not just pressing, but again, like we got everything tight before, really push through the feet, really push through the body, and really try to activate the lats here by flaring them into the triceps coming through the bottom. Again, these aren't things you would put in like all and suddenly throw them on an athlete at once, but start really emphasizing some of these setups. I would suggest getting the shoulder blades right, then getting the feet right, and once those are tight, then getting the act like the lats thrown into the triceps more. Uh, to get that more advanced bench, again, this is that bench 491. Now, if we really want to get, again, a little bit more specific, these are, gonna, these are tiny changes which, when mastered, can make a pretty big difference. So that, like, bench 601 coaching level, everything else will be the same that we talked about, but now really encourage a very active grip of the pinkies. That will give a much stronger grip. Again, stronger grip will mean more force through the bar. But it will also activate the entire outside of the arm more, which is going to lead me to the second part of the bench, which is as they're coming through, go ahead. So just really focusing on kind of keeping the elbows pulled inward a little bit. That will help activate the lats like you talked about and build tension. But as the lifter's coming through the bench, go ahead and bring it down, but really emphasizing driving through the, like trying to almost break the bar in half through the triceps. But really think like getting that hard drive through, driving the triceps all the way through the pinkies, trying to break the bar in half. Yeah, when everything else has learned how to be tight and store itself coming downward, that like all of that extra force and pressure will only drive up through the bar to help you get that bigger press. 